back. Joining us in studio, U.S. Attorney Claire Connors. Ms. Connors, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. It's great well, to you, be here. You and your federal partners have been very busy taking on everything crime, corruption, hate crime, violent crime at the federal level here in Hawaii. Today we have a sentencing in a Maui hate crime case. Why is that significant that that's going through? Yes, it is a very significant case, Gina, because it demonstrates to the public that it doesn't matter who you're targeting. If you are racially motivated in the violence that you commit against another person, you will face criminal consequences. And we have two defendants who are being sentenced today. They were convicted after a trial for their hate crimes, and uh, it's going to be an important message to send to our community. Sure. Another huge case is that of the accused uh, crime boss, Mike Miskey. We did notice in public record that you yourself, the top boss, coming into the courtroom. That's a pre that's precedent setting. Tell me why you're getting involved um, in this landmark case. Well, it is a, a large case for our office. It's still in the prosecution stage. I am honored to work alongside a number of assistant United States attorneys. We have a lot of work on our plate, and I'm always happy to jump in and assist when I can. Now, that's a sprawling case that goes on and on and back so many years. Is that part of the reason that, that you yourself would come and be involved? Well, it, uh, it is a case that's going to uh, be very important for our district, and I'm very happy with the assistant United States attorneys who are prosecuting that case. But again, we have a lot on our plate, and I'm always happy to step in and help when I can. All right. Also on your plate is keeping our kids safe and our teens. And to that end, you do have a case ongoing uh, with uh, Dwayne Yuen. And you're looking for potentially more victims as well? Yes, we are. This is another important case. Child exploitation crimes are going to continue to be one of our priorities. And Mr. Yoon was arrested last month. He has been indicted and he has been detained. It is important for us that the community come to us with any information that they might have. Any persons who have been victimized by Mr. Yoon, they should contact the FBI at Yoon Investigations at FBI.gov. Okay, and we'll show that for the people there. Now, there must have been something you know, in the investigation that led you to believe that there are more victims, because even this step is, doesn't happen in every case uh, with, with child predators. Right. Unfortunately, in these kinds of cases, the trauma that these victims suffer can manifest in a number of different ways, and not always is it the case that victims are ready to come forward with their story. It needs to be the right time for them, and what we want them to know is if they too were victimized by Mr. Yoon or by any other perpetrator that they can come to us and report it and we will act accordingly. Okay. Public corruption is keeping the federal offices very busy and you've had some again landmark cases there. You want to talk about a couple of those recently? Stuart Stant on Maui, Mickey Lum with campaign. Yes, last month we uh, secured a sentence of 10 years for Stuart Stant. He was a Maui County official. He accepted upwards of two million dollars in bribes. It is an important case because it demonstrates that our office is very actively engaged in ferreting out public corruption at the federal, state, and local level. If it's an employee, if it's a lobbyist, as you mentioned, we recently had a sentence returned for Nikki Lum Davis. She was sentenced for two years for engaging in unregistered lobbying. So any type of integrity crime that affects the ability of our democracy to work the way it's supposed to will be a case that we will investigate and prosecute. Sure. Huge danger in our community right now, fentanyl and the drugs. You have an event coming up to help bring awareness to that this weekend? Yes, we do. We have Celebrate Safe Communities. We are going to be gathering as a partnership of law enforcement. All of us chief law enforcement officers will be at Pearl Ridge this weekend from 10 to 3 talking about what we're seeing. And yes, fentanyl is increasingly a threat because the overdose death potential is so acute. Just the smallest amount of fentanyl can cause an overdose. And we're mostly concerned about our children because they're being targeted on Instagram and Snapchat by dealers. But meth continues to be our main issue. And we know that meth, not only as an addictive narcotic, is going to cause all types of problems for us, not just violence related to illegal gun sales and drug sales, but also the addiction and what it's going to cause on our mental health platform, too. Last time we saw you, we talked about the COVID relief money, and you were then and are st continue to add more and more and more indictments and charges having to do with fraud with COVID relief money. Yes. Uh, but there's a program for people to come clean before they get indicted? Yes, there is. So you hear about our criminal prosecutions, and we are actively uh, partnering with all of our federal uh, offices of inspector general, our, our federal criminal investigative agencies. But what we want 
in addition to criminal indictments, is we want the money back. So there are civil mechanisms that we are utilizing as well. So if you got a PPP loan that you did not deserve, if you've got some money from the federal government that you did not deserve, you can give that money back and we can work through civil justice remedies as well. Just recently, the Department of Justice issued a voluntary self-disclosure policy that applies now to all 94 districts in our country. And that means that if you come forward and uh, admit to corporate misconduct or misdeeds, that you will not face a guilty plea unless there's some kind of aggravating circumstances. So this is a big deal. It's part of what we're doing to encourage cooperation with the government, because what we want first and foremost is compliance, good corporate government uh, governance, and this is one way we're hoping to achieve that. That's great. And for relief money to go to actually giving relief to those who deserve right. it. Right. Right. Small businesses, the uh, intended recipients, they didn't get the money when those who didn't deserve it got it. Well, thank you for everything that you're doing to help keep things clean. Your job never ends, truly. Right, right. Happy to do it, and uh, that's our job, to protect our community. Thank you, and we'll send it back to you.